Hi friends, it's people time! <laughs> and you might have already noticed from the intro and the thumbnail and potentially the name that this is not something that you are used to seeing from me and that is because this was actually built after a request from a patron. So this is for Daniel and Daniel has sent me a message and asked specifically for a gothic house sort of rundown uh, and they told me that they usually pay with about two to four sims um, and I thought that was very interesting, not something that I expected anyone would like to see from me. <laughs> and it definitely felt like new territory. I am personally not very familiar with this type of uh, darker design. You know, I'm a big fan of light and the sun and I want big windows everywhere. And I definitely didn't want to completely neglect my personal style and taste because I'm, well, first of all, for myself, <laughs> because uh, I enjoy building and being a tiny bit selfish, I want to keep enjoying building. Um, and then on the other hand, I kind of thought that somebody who liked my videos and my usual builds probably wouldn't want me to stray away from what I'm guessing they like about the stuff that I do, the content, um, usually. And I didn't mention this earlier, but Daniel said a vampire type house or lair uh, specifically. And now this whole vampire aesthetic is something that feels to me as if it conflicts with my personal style. <laughs> So the challenge was to pick things from the vampiric realm of design <laughs> that also fit what I like in my builds and what I like to build. From the beginning I knew I would enjoy the rundown aspect that comes with this being a very very old house. Anyways, and you know that's something I like to build, I love doing historical exteriors and I knew this was gonna be fun and you can already tell I'm using lots of Felix Andres gothic uh, exterior items and that was lots of fun and I was very glad I got to do that so that was kind of an obvious way to go and then for the landscaping of the rest of the lot I felt like I came to a crossroads where I decided against doing what I thought was the obvious choice there, which was death, basically. Just lots of dead plants and everything looking kind of sad. <laughs> um, and I instead, I chose to make everything very overgrown, which in my uneducated opinion still fits the vampire aesthetic. It's just a little more refined. I think. Or maybe not even that. Maybe it just uh, suits me better. But that was also very enjoyable to do and for once I've actually left in all or I guess almost all of the landscaping that I did which I usually cut out but this video was quite short so I thought I could allow myself to leave it in in case anyone wants to see and I'm gonna put it in its own chapter so um, if you're not particularly interested in just the placing of all those plants then you can easily skip it. I did use the tool mod a lot for this build and if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend it. It really makes everything just so much easier or straight up possible, things that were not possible before. And especially working on lots with um, customized terrain, it's truly a game changer. I mean, look at this hill that this house is placed on. It's tiny <laughs> and still it destroys everything. You can't properly place any plants at the correct level that they're supposed to be at. It's so annoying, nothing works. Placing the individual fence parts that you're gonna see me use a little later on, 
uh, would have been impossible because they just float through the air and raising those up from the basement without seeing where they are on top would have it, it would have been impossible so really thankful for the tool mod and again I highly recommend and you're seeing me use the organic uh, bricks here so not the actual wallpaper but the cornerstone and I think those look so good with our brick wallpaper. Uh, I think it's the one from Realm of Magic. And it's so beautiful. It has that perfect color with those little details where some bricks are a little more red and some are a little more colder toned. And it's just awesome. And it's also uh, worn off. So it fit perfectly with what I was trying to do here. And I've actually only used I'm gonna be honest, I don't know exactly, but I think it was five or six packs that I've used for this build. And you will find all of this in the uh, Patreon link where you can download the tray files. And for that, I've used lots of custom content, as you can tell. So for example, the terrazzo floor that I just placed on the balcony is from Felixandra's Florence set. And I've used quite a bit of the Florence items, especially on the interior. And I don't want to spoil that too much for you, but as I've already said, I didn't want to compromise on my personal taste too much. So they are some stylish vampires, but I'm guessing that's what you expected from me. So I'm not ashamed. <laughs> The windows are also surprisingly big for a vampire family. I'm not too well versed in vampire lore, but um, yeah, usually they have some kind of trouble with sunlight, <laughs> right? <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, I was not willing to um, give up on my huge windows that I like to put everywhere. So this tower has double story windows, but they're cool. So I hope you won't mind. And they also, I did not, or did I? No, I don't think I placed any curtains on the inside. So I hope those vampires are fine with a little sunlight. Then again, I've built this in Forgotten Hollow which is the vampire world. And it's so dark. It's so incredibly dark. I don't think I could stand living there for five seconds. It's just so dark, which is also why I placed a million billion candles everywhere and on the balcony as well, which also has a fire feature. So, I had to bring some type of light into this place that is vampire code compliant. <laughs> and I think that worked. This is the fence that took such a long time. Um, you saw that with a little bit of movie magic because it really did take me forever. And still, the tool mod made it so much easier. It has this open gate because I don't know about your vampires, but my vampires are very friendly. <laughs> they are probably vegetarian. Is that what the Twilight vampires who don't eat humans were called or call themselves? I think it was, right? Can't believe I read all of those books twice. <laughs> As a teenager, that's such an embarrassing thing to admit on the internet. Um, <laughs> and I still don't know, but I think it was. So yeah, my vampires are very friendly, they're very stylish, and well, I'm gonna have to say, I think as <laughs> I say in every build, I build these houses for myself. So I was kind of thinking, where would I live if I was a vampire? And not a modern vampire, not a young vampire, a very old one. One that turned in, I don't know, one that turned 500 years ago. So that's also how I furnished the interior. 
because I think I would then probably still have that natural appreciation for the things of that time. But I would also very much look at how fashion and design and architecture changed over the years and I would love to be able to see that. That's probably the only reason I would want to be immortal. So I think that's what I would use all that time for because you just, you know, you just, you, you have so much time suddenly. What do you do with all that time? So you could take to gardening, um, which is what these people have done because there's plants everywhere. And I do personally really appreciate this overgrown aesthetic. So I'm thinking I might do something like this because I feel like you probably feel a little obligated to convert to this darker aesthetic. As I said before, that's not my style right now in life, but I feel if I became a vampire, then I would probably feel obligated to at least cater to the stereotype a little bit, you know, in some ways. Oh, maybe I would want to rebel. I don't know. But let's say I would be compliant. <laughs> I don't know. There's probably very old vampires overlooking this whole process to see if you're not a, the vampire equivalent of a teenage rebel and actually go in for... I don't know, a white and blue beach house or something. But um, apart from growing a beautiful garden, um, I would definitely spend my time researching um, and maybe personally checking out upcoming designers and potentially getting their stuff early. So that's the mind of a businesswoman. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I could sell for profit. I would keep them and look at them because I love pretty things and I love decorating places. So if I was a vampire, I'd have a million houses. Not not a million. I admit that was an over-exaggeration, but uh, maybe I would hide some from the vampire council that I just made up myself. <laughs> um, uh, because I definitely would want to have a beach house as well. And if I would want it to be white and blue, then it would be white and blue and not dark at all. Uh, so this is the one, <laughs> this right here, this is the one that I would invite the council to. <laughs> and then they could also check out some good design because I do think that that improves everyone's life. Obviously, that is not how you are going to have to um, use this build if you actually want to play in it. Although you might have to refurnish because this interior has some very stylish modern pieces. Although I did also keep to the dark aesthetic for the interior. So very proud of myself how I managed to do all that. <laughs> you know it's not a Honey Bella video without me petting myself on the back repeatedly. Uh, as you can tell, already I'm using lots of the Florence items. And you know, during building, I thought that made a lot of sense. That something about it vampires screamed Italian at me. And now I'm really wondering where I got that idea. Because obviously the the vampire, the traditional vampire that everyone thinks of when they say vampire is from Transylvania, which is nowhere near Italy. But um, something about vampires says Italy. It must be, that'd be so embarrassing, but it must be Twilight, right? I mean, the <laughs> Volturi. <laughs> oh God. The Volturi are Italian, but I feel like it can only be Twilight, can it? There must be something else about vampire lore that says Italy to me. I'm gonna Google this right now. It's very embarrassing. I'm gonna take you along for this. Please bear with me. Oh, I'm gonna have to tell you something about me <laughs> before I do this. <laughs> I, my sole goal in Googling anything 
is to do it in the most obnoxious way. <laughs> so whenever I Google something, I will phrase my Google search as if I was talking to a real person, not only a real person, a friend who potentially already knows what I'm talking about. So I will not use the actual words that describe whatever I want to research and I will definitely phrase it as a question. And I will also definitely put a question mark at the end because I'm just that annoying. This habit has definitely driven people insane before and I will never stop doing it because I think it's hilarious. Except for academic purposes sometimes. I don't do it, but very rarely. So for this one, I will put <laughs> dear Google. <laughs> oh, dear Googler. Yeah, that's even, <laughs> that's even funnier. Dear Googler. Okay, I'm putting the microphone out the way. I hope you can still hear me. Dear Googler, why do I think vampires have something to do with Italy? Question mark. Don't forget the question mark. It's very important. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm just gonna check out because Google's not too bad at understanding me and that's all I want from this technology that is only here to please me. Um, okay, so there's definitely something coming up about Twilight and... Bella Swan and nothing about, oh, are vampires Italian? Moreover, early testimonies about vampires come from Mediterranean countries and notably from Italy, as happens with humanist Antonio de Ferraris, Greek-Italian theologian Leo Aladius, or with Archbishop Giuseppe Antonio Davanzati, who in 1739 wrote a dissertation of vampires of which a and this is where the short version stops but um oh yeah here it is um vampires of which a copy has recently been discovered in the warwick library this came full circle in 1958 when terence fisher's film tomb of dracula starring christopher lee whose mother was italian in the role of the vampire count, reached Italy. It created a veritable vampire craze in the country of Dolce Vita. Vampires inspired fully Italian productions to pick up the gothic genre. Works produced included world blockbusters such as Mario Bava's Black Sunday 1960 and Black Sabbath 1963, as well as anthologies like Onella Volta's and Valerio Riva's The Vampire and pop songs such as Bruno Martino's Dracula Cha Cha Cha. <laughs> All right, that's epic. Let's see if I can find any more fun things from this Google search. Uh, there are related questions, which are where did vampires come from? What are vampires a symbol of? How do I become a vampire? That's what I'm looking for. A person may become a vampire in a variety of ways, the most common of which is to be bitten by a vampire. Other methods include sorcery, committing suicide, contagion, or having a cat jump over a person's corpse. I've never heard of that one before. As I said, I'm not very well versed in this topic, but that's cool. I guess I should have put a cat scratcher and a football in this place, but feel free to correct my mishaps, my wrongdoings <laughs> as always. Oh, um, I see we have already moved on to the library slash living room and we are actually already past it. I'm gonna have to remark on it that that was my favorite room that I did in this build and I think it is very luxurious and cute. And this place also has a nursery which I'm building right now. So as Daniel said, he, they like to play with two to four people. I thought this made a lot of sense as this would be a place for a vampire couple and their baby. So again, everything I know about vampires comes from Twilight. I don't know if vampires can have babies, because in Twilight they usually can't, uh, but I think they can in The Sims. So a nursery should make sense. And if you 
were to look for a place for this little cozy cute vampire family to move into after they the baby has grown up to become a child um uh felixander has built a two um two really really cool vampire lairs uh they're there's some works of art and i wouldn't even want to compare this one to those ones so yeah if you were looking for something to move your family into after they have kind of outgrown this build then i would highly recommend those you can find his builds in the gallery at felixandra sims and there's also if, if you never check that out there's some gorgeous gorgeous builds and they're a big inspiration and uh yeah so that's kind of what i would recommend you um if that vampire baby ever grows up i'm honestly not sure how that works <laughs> so this is the bedroom for the parents i um, use the paris glass doors to separate the nursery from the bedroom so the parents can check to see if everything's fine with the baby at a quick glance but then they can also close the curtains that i've put there if they need some privacy oh there's also actually curtains in this bedroom in front of the windows so i was talking shit earlier but that's fine also did not place a coffin because i'm just not that kind of girl but you can easily switch out this beautiful comfortable bed for a coffin if your vampires require it from you I hope you enjoyed this build and this video. If you did, I would be very grateful if you left a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye bye, love you!